to expect that toward the second half. We also have riders with very different intentions. For Lucy Eisdale, for example, she's got nothing to do except sit in and just sprint uh, and then try and recover, even if she doesn't make it front group to the finish, which I think she's more than capable of. But even if she didn't, Anna, she could still uh, take away the most points for this event. And so it is all about strategy. Speaking of which, look at her moving through the bunch oh. before anybody even notices her. That is super savvy moving. She was at peak speed before when she'd already passed three quarters of the bunch and catching people oh, a bit unawares. Now she is Hineken, getting past though. there. Yep, Our that ninja was warrior. Henneken, that looked um, pretty impressive. Oh, the men, I will just swap immediately over because they are already approaching the similar part of the course. And we do have an interesting situation off the front. Gosh, this is a... Uh, Quite a move. Blackie here. Ob of course, O'Brien is in there. Now they've got to know we've got that five kilometer to go hero award. So maybe they're aiming for that. But we've got Tabalong. Amazing. Tabalong and Mark O'Brien always seem to be going head to head. Gin, is it Gin? 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 Gin. Gin is up there as well from Aero Masters. This is a battle Gin. between the Kiwis and the Aussies. It's pretty much like we're back to the Anzac Classic. <laughs> yeah, it, it, they're getting used to this now. They also know that uh, if New Zealand, I mean, if Mark O'Brien moves, somebody's got to go. And I feel as though Tabalong uh, is the NZ Row counterpart to O'Brien in the Aero. And there is a big rivalry happening between these two teams uh, already. I think it's really improving the level of this, especially when we don't have Prem League this season. So coming oh. down, tap. Tabalong wow. takes the points. Now, interesting to think what perhaps O'Brien will do here. Will he choose to work or are, they're all coming back together? So surely somebody has got to keep pushing the pace. Sam Lindsay, it looks like, is going to be the one to keep pushing the pace, Anna. And you know mm -hmm. what? Fair enough, because I did say it was NZ Road Aero that we'd probably be looking at. Deepak, I kind of ignored you in that statement i didn't mean to but you are well and truly uh giving me a little bit of a poke especially with fabian devola in the first one and then sam Lindsay. so i apologize uh <laughs> it is definitely a course that would suit them as well yeah we're just uh i've got uh some of the segments coming up looks like we're still on the first sprint i'll wait till those have updated and uh then i'll pull those through because i think it's gonna be quite interesting that second sprint with that early attack from the three NZ Bro and the Aero Riders, Sam Lindsay coming over the top. He is a Kiwi, but he actually doesn't race for the Ki uh, NZ Bro team. He races for DPAC. But uh, here we go. Let's have a look at these segments because it's going to show us a whole lot about how this race is shaping up. Mm. Haggerty, NZ Bro, look at this. First across line, 15. Fastest time segments, 35. So he may not be winning all the sprints, but he's coming through in the fastest times. That is a huge haul at 50 points. Fabian Diolva next at 16. So, wow, Haggerty, smashing it. Yeah, and again, we saw him in that first sprint, but it wasn't so much in the second. So there are many ways um, to be able to attack this race and try and get the points. Wait, 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 was... wait, 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 <laughs> what, wait. That's a beautiful kiss. Look at this. Yes. But look, I'm giving it this. Oh, because look at his shoe and sock combo. I said to him, he's got to have a touch of Kiwi in there. The black socks, the white shoes. Those are the colors of the New Zealanders. The silver fern oh, represented in his shoe sock know. combo. <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm giving it the A-OK. -okay. You're, you're clutching at straws there, Russell. But all right, good on you. Great move from Mark Boasted. And I think indicative uh, from Aero. I'm still laughing at that, by the way. Uh, that'll get me through the night, that one. Um, <laughs> that Aero are very clearly um, not here to just muck around and sit back and let the race unfold, uh, which we know is always going to be a little bit of fun. Apologies um, to the Aero rider in the visor. If Anna sees you, she will probably <laughs> um, publicly humiliate you for your fashion choice, and I apologise in advance. I didn't see who it was. Uh, I just saw that it was there. But it, it is really interesting when you do get to these races and these big teams turn up with very clear missions uh, and the other teams they can't consider their strategy uh, in a bubble they also need to think well you know aero going to keep attacking and how will that affect our ability to get points and 
um, you know, perhaps not targeting every point. Now, speaking of which, again, NZ Bro and Aero are putting a lot of pressure on at the front. Travelling pretty quickly. They're only looking at about a 40-minute race time um, overall. So tonight Whoa. will go very quickly. Even though it's a 33 kilometres, the men are tracking at the moment uh, to go through it just over the 40-minute mark. So fairly oh. swift. Seriously, how does Mike O'Brien get away all the time? <laughs> I mean, this is crazy how often he gets away. Am I wrong? I mean, it's every race. I, I don't know if we can give him the rider, you know, the 5K to go hero every time. But, you know, Fabian Davola, mm -hmm. he's coming through pretty quick to ride on his tail. Bleakley's leading the charge behind with uh, Richard there from Masaka. And we've got uh, Jugen from the Aero Masters coming through as well. People are really, they see Mark O'Brien as a threat. That's why he's up there. Um, and that's why people are chasing him down. I do have the side by side view because both the men and the women are approaching that part of the course where they're going to be hitting the sprint. They're almost at the exact same part of the course now. So soon we'll be able to have uh, a bit more of the coverage of both, but this is quite a lot of action happening over in the men's race. Well, we did, this has from the first sprint being indicative of what they're trying to do to really um, push the pace again and I do yeah I don't know I mean I feel like Mark O'Brien should kind of be the honorary 5k hero every week uh, regardless <laughs> and, then, and then we have to acknowledge the other people trying to give it a bit of a stab uh, because regardless of whether or not he wins he never ever fails to animate and this has been every time that we have seen him here and I'll say again how much I love uh, that there's no Prem League this season. You may not love that and the riders may not love that as much, <laughs> but I really love having these guys yeah. back. Like I, I think agree. it really lifts the level of community and um, and we get to see really the, the best of the best. I love it. I think it's fantastic. We've got, you know, a number of the Aussies who were in the World Championships team. Uh, we've got, you know, Olympians and Olympic gold medalists and all around we've got a very impressive uh, field lining up and that goes for the women as well they may be a um, a bee cat but it's a really high level yeah exactly i uh, just looking at this group that it's sort of been ones and twos have just been sprinting across and then they've got the huge peloton like just bearing down on them so they've kind of i don't know if it's a little bit of wasted effort i don't think they're going to be able to stay away particularly they've only got about one second off a group that's been led by the nz bro gandalfs um behind them rounding this corner though we do have an attack off the front here from Cheong, uh, can't see, I think that's AHDR, is that it? Uh, no, World Elite Zwifters dropping the burrito, so no one's going to be able to get on him. Good drop of that burrito up. Out. Who is that? That's Brad Pitt. Oh, hello, Brad Pitt. Ben Pitt, his name is actually, but I prefer <laughs> Brad Pitt, I think it's. <laughs> I don't know who then our Angelina is or our Jennifer Aniston. Either way, Brad Pitt, good to have you back. Uh, that was... And pretty good move there from the World Elite Swifters because that's the first time they've really poked uh, their head into the wind. I imagine that as we continue on, they're going to only just get wound up uh, and we'll see a bit more of them. That was Ken Chong who went on the attack. Uh, he's a pretty powerful sprinter in his own right. He's an over a thousand watt uh, for 15 second kind of rider. Uh, maybe he was just warming his legs up. We're back to the women here. Gee, some splits are starting to open up, aren't oh, they? They're small, yeah. but the power goes on and those little gaps open up. Gina Van Rossum was very impressive uh, in one of the earlier sprints. Of course, we've seen what Claudia Henneken uh, can do. Lucy Isdale, Melissa Fung uh, flew through in that first sprint as well. Um, she's our little pocket rocket with a very high heart rate. If you recall the first time we commented yes. on her, I was yep. concerned about her metrics, uh, only to learn that that is quite normal for her. Uh, so that's the good thing about seeing Riders Week in, uh, week out. You kind of get to understand uh, what their normal is and you can kind of pick that. And of course, we've got Hensa Semenko out there as well, uh, who's not necessarily uh, known as a sprinter, but she's so strong. She can just keep going and going and going. 
Yeah, and looking at the points now, I mean, I'm not surprised that Lucy Isdale is just dominating. We've seen her in those first sprints going absolutely crazy. I do want to take this opportunity to read out what their cocktail of the week is. Although I do think it's actually a shot. So they said, uh, actually, yeah, rather than cocktails, they think that this course is more of a shot course with a chaser. So they're going to go for a tequila shot with a chaser of Corrosive Haze IPA, which is actually a local um, microbrewery in Richmond, Virginia. So it's a local to this course. Mm. And there are actually 30 microbreweries in Richmond. So definitely worth a visit in real life if you can get there. Mm, that sounds like a little bit of fun. And, and uh, with Bleakley being our um, sommelier for the men's oh. crew, I feel like uh, on the ladies' side, we've got a few different choices for who uh, may be able to take us on a pub crawl through um, either Zwift or, or actually Richmond if we ever got the chance. Oh, absolutely. I think let's make this happen, Kate. Next time we'll uh, be doing our, our uh, show from a microbrewery in Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very swift if you recall uh you know how they've set up shop at some of the world championships in the past i'm wondering this year for um, the wollongong world championships um for this is particularly pertinent for the aussies and kiwis um that they will have i believe they will have a very cool swift house as they always do and wollongong is beautiful by the water uh, so they might be that we may actually get to do a little bit of commentating uh, in situ, Anna. That could be fun. Uh, Sam Hill yeah, off on the, the march, Anna. Um, he was brilliant yesterday. Now, he didn't end up uh, taking the win. I, I don't know if it was a bit of off timing or perhaps the legs were a bit sore from the, the big effort that he did a little bit earlier uh, in that race. But um, he certainly got pretty good form at the moment. And so it's not surprising to see that he's next on their list for people uh, who are going to attack. Uh, and go on the move. Not a huge, huge gap opening up, but significant enough that they are just going to have to keep the pressure on uh, to keep it going. Yeah, he's looking good. Actually, I uh, got sent a photo of him from Tully Leicester of him doing the Anzac Classic. And he just looked too smiley, I think. I think maybe he just uh, was enjoying himself <laughs> too much and not putting in the huge effort. So maybe that's a, uh, a lesson for next time. Um, is uh, Sam just, you know, put on a bit of an angry face and, oh, look at that though. Yeah. It's like a big uh, oh, you, yeti out there. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that, look, that's, if you want an angry face, there we have it. Um, buried under all of that hair. Oh, fashion police is not happy. <laughs> fashion police is not happy. The, well, and I think this uh, week, Anna, for our 5K hero, in weeks prior, we've discussed, you know, Tim Tams and pineapple lumps. Uh, for the winners, but uh, and I've also promised those to the Americans, by the way, in America okay. West. So uh, we'll have to live up to that. Uh, but I think this week it would be appropriate um, to go for the Anzac biscuits. So for oh, yes. non Anzacs out there, uh, Google yourself for good Anzac biscuit recipe, and uh, you will thank us later. Your waistline may not thank us, but that's yours to deal with. Uh, they are <laughs> delicious and a very good on bike snack, I might add. Oh, I've actually got a um, packet of them to make upstairs. I was going to be my little job for tomorrow, oh, so excellent. I might do that. We do have a text off the front as we were talking about fashion, as I always get distracted with. Uh, the, these are riders getting lapped ahead of them. So this is Mark Bostead with Mark O'Brien, a two-up attack. Now, this is danger, danger time. Trasino here from World Elite Zwifters understands that he's got a feather, which is just not useful on this flat terrain. Uh, but Mark Bostead and Mark O'Brien absolutely crushing it. We've got one of the lap drivers trying to get back on them. He's just sprinting to even get on this train. I mean, could you think of a better combo than Mark Boasted and Mark O'Brien? The Marcos. Uh, Mark oh. O'Brien is usually called Marco uh, in Australia and amongst Australian commentators. So now we've got like Marco 1 and Marco 2. Oh, uh, and I like it. I'm happy for Australia to claim both of them, quite frankly. <laughs> I think this is going to become a bit of a rivalry oh, between no. us. It is a very good combination. They've got a couple of uh, breakmates there as well. Tricano, uh, he's popped his head up a lot more in the last couple of weeks. We are in week four. Um, Tricino, pardon me, from World Elite Swifters. Uh, we've also got, I think, is it Thomas Williams there as well? Um, I'm thinking that he may be a little behind. It, it's, I'm just unable to read that on the screen at the moment. But oh, he uh, is behind. He is. Uh, 
Ma actually, Mark Bosted just took out that sprint from that attack off the group with Mark O'Brien taking second. So we saw NZ Bro in the sprint before take a bit of a, a one-two punch. Now we've got Aero coming through with their version, which was an early attack from the Marks. So uh, great job there. The lap drivers uh, looks like they kind of made their way into the pack. So what we're going to see, though, that was sprint number four. And then we've got one more, and then they'll head their way towards Libby Hill. So uh, we'll head over to the women. They're approaching the sprint next. Um, but we'll see those lap riders kind of go a different way once they uh, head off towards the Libby Hill after party. Yeah, it is uh, easy to sometimes um, think a group might be a little bit bigger. We actually saw that yesterday as well, and then they all turned a corner and we went, oh, turns out it's not such a big <laughs> bunch. Yeah. It can be helpful for anybody uh, either riding or following along or anybody playing the role of uh, team director to keep a good eye on Swift Power. Um, it updates every minute. Uh, and so within that, you can generally tell uh, how big the bunch is, uh, not in real time, but uh, accurate enough usually that it gives a good picture of how the race is unfolding. Now, Claudia Hennigan first came to our notice uh, in that first week with the bike change, Anna, Whoa. because she didn't change bikes. Uh, we've got Michelle from AHDRL going. It, she was also on the ride yesterday and did very, very well. Uh, and Michelle Bond it is. Oh, oh, was bullets. Lucy going to take But Lucy Emily Garland took her. Ooh. Jeez, over I, Emily and Mel. That, this is a TBR v AHDR. Look at that. Three green, three purple. I mean, this is just an absolute battle right to the end. I'll see if we can uh, get those splits up too. Just see how they are all going and they'll i'll put them up as soon as they're updated but this is going to be uh quite a battle between the tbr and the ahdrl it's good to see the competitiveness between uh these you know the bigger teams because we can look at the screen at first and say there's not a huge uh bunch that starts in these b in the b cap for the women in apac but every rider is so competitive and it doesn't whittle down uh, to small groups very often at all. Uh, in fact, it's it's often uh, very close on the overall table and swapping around a little bit, as we did see when that table uh, of results came up before. So it looks to me as though the teams have got quite different strategies um, of how to gain the points. But look at this table, uh, and it's quite clear, uh, isn't it, who is dominating today? Oh, Lucy is Darby. She knows how to sprint so far ahead. This is a great effort by her. And I have noticed, though, that we do have riders really pushing pace off the front. This was a sort of a rave push with a bit of AHDRL there as well. And it has strung out the pack quite a bit. So they are putting the herd on. So TBR might be taking out the, uh, the sprinting points at the moment. But I don't know. I think other teams are really, really trying to make them hurt and suffer to get there. So uh, just want to say as well, on the uh, men's side, which we might jet over to, we'll put up their points as well. We do have another attack. I'm going to, I'll send you some Tim Tams if you can guess who the attack's from before I put it up on screen. Oh, will it have to be Mark O'Brien? It's Mark O'Brien. <laughs> there we go. It's Mark <laughs> O'Brien again. <laughs> Tim With Blackie uh, here from NZ Bro right on his tail. I just... What kind of a rider? I mean, you've got all the in real life experience, Kate. What kind of a rider can just have this amount of breakaways? He's just, he's been around for a very long time and he's one of those incredible athletes that actually he could race a 400k race and still be able to push it at the end. Like he's really developed that throughout his career. He's certainly, and I don't believe he's ever done it to my knowledge anyway, uh, he's the kind of athlete who could do a 24 hour, who could do some of these ultra endurance things because he can just keep going and keep going and keep going. And his shortfalling, if you will, in this kind of racing is that it's often a bit too short. Mm. Uh, and so sometimes when they are really powerful and dynamic courses, his, the way that he can be competitive is just by wearing them down. Uh, which he has the tenacity to do. And by now he has the self-belief to do it too because uh, it does continue to work and I think it also wears down people's spirits. Uh, it's very good to see Sean Blackie up there um, as well, Anna. He's kind of newer to the scene uh, in terms of the number of races that he has done uh, compared to some of the others. 
but he's been coming along in leaps and bounds. Now, he is a level 50 um, racer. He does have 350-odd races under his belt, so he's not completely new to it. Um, but some of the other riders have got uh, a few more than that again. Uh, and he's come to with a bit of a mission today. But Mark O'Brien, once again, man on oh. a mission. He's going to push it all the way to this sprint. Uh, if they don't want to work with him, he's like, that's cool. I'll go alone. And here he goes. But again, Anna, we can sit here and talk about him and being our 5K hero or the most tenacious out there, but he's not at the top of the points board. And no. this is a points race. Look at that, Haggerty. So he's silently been getting all of those fastest time segments. Actually, look at that. His fastest time segments. This is a hint to people who are racing over the next couple of days. He has got 45 points. The next highest points is nine. So what Haggerty is doing is he is mopping up. They, they go through the sprint five times. He could get the first five slots in those fastest time segments, 20 points, 19, 18, 17, 16. And then he has got mm. 45. And then it just all the dregs get left for everybody else. So this is, um, yeah, this is really smart work there from Haggerty. Uh, as we see Price here from NZ Bro Frodo. They've got some uh, great pickups on this team. This is a new rider I haven't heard of, actually. Uh, he's got Cheong right on him, who's actually timed that a little bit better, uh, getting on the draft and then attacking over the top. Price, though, quite a good sprint opening up. Not quite enough. It's going to be taken out by Cheong. Sam Hill. I didn't picture him as a sprinter, but he's rolled through in third. So that's great there. But yeah, again, this is a word of a tip to those racing. Go for those fastest time segments because, wow, you can get a lot of points. Mm. And I, when you point out, you, you say you don't think Sam Hill's necessarily a sprinter. This is such high pace. Uh, they have not slowed down at all. Again, 33 kilometres they're looking to do uh, in around the 41 uh, 40 to 41 minute mark so they are absolutely clipping along that does take some uh, pounce out of some sprinters legs so you can talk about it being a sprinters course all day but when it is just so flat out they the sprinters don't have a chance to recover the really pure sprinters uh, and it does open the door for riders like hill now he's pushing on with this effort which i think is really again indicative mm -hmm. of what aero have been oh. out there doing today you almost don't need a whiteboard um for what they're doing tonight it is sprint keep going make everybody suffer uh, and they're accruing a lot of points by doing that one of my theories on that anna is because some of the most powerful sprinters are in this race and not on the aero team we're looking at uh, riders like ken chong at fabian davola these are the guys um, who can be just put out the pure amount of watts um, when given the chance. And so they do need to combat that by wearing them down. Yep, exactly. And we're seeing Sam Hill going off the front. They're around 4.5. The pack is looking like they're coming back together. Now they will now head towards the Broad Street Sprint. Uh, you can see in that mini map is that next sprint to come. So this is quite a tricky one. Uh, you kind of hit it after a right-hander. It's a little bit shorter. Uh, but the the women are now going towards their last time across the sprint, lap number five. Uh, and let's see who's going to take this out. I've got my, uh, I'm thinking uh, the 5K hero. I'm looking at Lucy Isdale on the women's side, just with how dominant she has been in these sprints. On the men's side, it's hard to go past um, Haggerty with just how he has raced and really made use of the sort of uh, points part of this. Not winning every sprint, but taking almost all of the points. As we're seeing Georgia uh, heading off the front. Oh, back into some lap riders. Hennekin there, the rider that you've uh, profiled. She's looking really good. Lucy, though, she's coming up from behind. Looks like Van Rossen might take that over Hennekin, her teammate, and Georgia from AHDRL in third. All right, now Emily Gartland uh, was very, very good last week. And again, I, I feel like I'm on repeat sometimes because each week she gets better. And we're seeing that really consistent a lot across a lot of the riders. Yes, from a physical perspective, a lot of them come into the season slightly uh, underdone and ready to uh, ramp up their racing season, but also as they're getting more experience and their teams um, a little bit more evolved. Take us through the points table here, Anna, because once again, that fastest through segment is really the important one to hit. Yeah, and Lucy, I mean, she's not as dominating as we saw with Haggerty with that fastest time segment. She's got Gartland right behind her. But then look at just the drop in points after that. 33 to Lucy, 25 to Emily, and then down to the most after that is five. So again, 
got to look at those fastest time ones. I do want to head straight over to the men. They are heading to that uh, Broad Street sprint, that next sprint, and we've got an attack off the front from Sam Hill again. So he's up at 8.5 watts. You can see the sprint is coming up just ahead of them, so you should be able to see just the banner sort of off in the distance in the nighttime of Richmond. He's got a little bit of a lead, but Trent Stevenson here is catching pretty quickly from behind. You can see the glowing arches there. Is he going to make it from this early attack? It is a big ask, and we might see some of these riders come through. He could take it, though. It is a little bit of a shorter sprint than the other one. Oh, this will be tight. It is a great tactic from Hill, but it looks like Haggerty's oh. for another fastest through segment, dropping the power up. He just charges past, does not stop. So it's not about just winning by the necessary amount. It is about getting that uh, fastest through segment. Ben Pitt coming through in second. Um, I want to unpack some of the tactics here about that fastest through segment, Anna. And I want to actually start um, by apologising to Sean Blackie because I thought um, that he wasn't one of the more experienced racers out there. That is my bad. He is, in fact. It's probably that I haven't... Uh, seen him in a lot of races, so I take that on board. Um, but Sean Blackie, no wonder he's been riding so well, given the experience that he does have. Uh, now let's talk about Haggerty and the way that he has approached this as we watch Trusino uh, pushing oh, off the front of the Swifters. Now this is not the first move he's made, so it's also uh, indicative that World Elite Swifters don't want to leave it um, to Devola and Chong at the end, our big powerhouses who are just sitting in there trying to look after themselves. But when you are going for a fastest through segment and not a first across the line, you can position yourself further back in the bunch and really use the draft of that bunch to accelerate and get a little bit more protection as you build up to speed uh, and use those wheels to chase. So that is a very good way to go through all of those sprints and sprints without having to accumulate the same fatigue as if you're actually jockeying for position and trying mm -hmm. uh, to win overall. Uh, Rusty Devlin, he, he just poked his head up. He is somebody else that can be quite dangerous in that final sprint if he is still there. And he looks to have had a reasonably conservative ride so far. Uh, not as conservative as some of the others who we literally have not seen but are still sitting in there, uh, which we could also call a very smart race mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, but he would be another one that they certainly should um, look to. Now, Josh Haggerty, he sprints for 15 seconds, Anna, at 1,337 watts, wow. right? That is 17.8 watts per kg. So while we are sitting here raving about how capable his strategy is, he is just the next best is around the 16.4 mark, and they're the Chongs and Devolas that we've been talking about. So he is also physically just uh, quite dominant in that regard. Uh, back to the women, Claudia Henneken, once again, uh, making her own luck. Fortune favours the brave Anna, and uh, yep. she is not afraid to stick her head in the wind. Now, I know that we've just missed um, the 5K to go because I just wanted to cover the sprint first, but I think I've got my eyes on who I'll give that uh, 5K uh, hero to as we see Henneken taking it off the front. Kylie here from AHD, although she, we haven't heard much from Kylie in this race. She's coming through pretty quick. We've also got, oh, of course... Who else could it be other than Lucy Isdale coming through, showing how it is done with those watts, 543 watts. Look at that uh, RPM, 79, fairly low. She's probably out of the saddle, pushing a really high mm. gear. We've got Henneken coming in quick behind with uh, Kylie then coming in, looking very good. Uh, I just want to say on the men's side, we'll, uh, let me do this, ready? Okay, 5k to go here. I wait. I'll see if I can. Uh... Oh, <laughs> put on the other stinger. I wanted to put on the picture. Here we go. 5k to go, hero. I am going to go Lucy Isdale for the woman. Controversially, I have changed my mind. I was going to go with Haggerty for how well. He had uh, really just played the game with the fastest time segments, um, fastest through segment. And I'm going to give it to Sam Hill. Now, look, he's been a fan favourite since the Zwift Academy. 
And um, I just, I like his style here. He has attacked non-stop. I always like a good attacker. Um, and he's got that diesel engine, which we heard so much about in the Zwift Academy um, competition. But I just, I just like him as a rider. He seems, his photo yesterday, he looks very friendly and smiley. Um, he's a sort of a smiling assassin. He's riding well here. I mean, people could be saying, what's the point in doing this move? Well, it's exciting. Um, and that's why you're going to get the five category here on the men's side. Lucy Esdale doesn't have much more to say. I love that she messages me every single week with their cocktail of the week, but uh, also just mopping up so many points. So good to see that. We will cut over now to the men's race as they're very quickly approaching Libby Hill and the end of their race. Well, goodness me, I would not have gone with um, Lucy and Sam, but I do think they are uh, incredible races and personalities as well. So I, I will support that. I mean, not that I have a say in her. I mean, that's kind of, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not like I get a say, but maybe one. Um, but given what Sam Hill is currently doing, I think he probably uh, deserves that. And at some point I, I want a compilation of um, the Hill brothers and something with a bit of, you know, Benny Hill music. Like, oh. that's just a wish list for me. It's up to you, producer. Uh, now, what he is doing, it's not too far from the finish because they come down. You can actually sit in the top right corner. Once they do the hairpin, they go onto the cobbles. That is it. They've got less than a minute of racing uh, to go. So these guys are getting very, very close. Sam Hill has been absorbed back into the group. Sam Lindsay is the one pushing the pace. Chong is up there pushing hard too. Uh, he needs to be very smart in how he uh, rides this. He does not want to go too early. He is finding himself on the front. I want him to find a wheel. I want him to get oh. comfortable because he's got the power uh, to get there at the top. But will some of the less sprinting clients go early and take this? Fabian Davola on the move early, Anna. We wow, him wow, wow. The KG sprinter. Can he hold on to this? I think he I think he can. can. I, wait, no. I think Sam Lindsay's coming through pretty good. Look at this from Deepak. Evola, Partridge Madsen, Sam Lindsay, Chong, Lupinetti. We'll watch a replay of that. That was phenomenal racing in that men's race. Now, I do want to say this uh, Libby Hill, you've got to time it right. And I think that's what we saw. You've got to wait till those really steep corners to launch your attack. Let's see if we can uh, get a replay of how that looked. Because, wow, they, um, I've got to say, those guys, Devola, Lindsay from Deepak, they made it happen where it counted. So let's have a look. Wow, that was an early move from Devola, but that is what we did expect from him. Chong, we also talked up. I think he went to the front a little bit too early. Actually, I think he got uh, a little bit of the jitters there because he needed, at this point, to be sitting on a wheel. Uh, but very impressive. I mean, look at the caliber of riders who are just sitting up there. Boasted O'Brien, they are absolutely on the move. Boasted oh. was the first to move and give a launch pad. He was doing that for Torben Partridge Madsen, but Fabian Davola just threw it down. He is such a powerful sprinter. We knew that he was uh, waiting in the wings for this to happen. As they came toward the line, Anna, it looked like Sam Lindsay and Torben Partridge Madsen were going to get close, but Devola just kept accelerating back out of the seat, back into the orange as it pitched up to 11, 12%. They couldn't get as close as they needed to. Partridge Madsen ended up second with Sam Lindsay in third, Ken Chong in fourth, Lupa Netti in fifth, and Josh Haggerty uh, came over the line after that. Kenta Endo. Um, not too far behind that either. They are the big name sprinters that we have come to expect uh, in that kind of finish. Is the women's going to play out in the same way? Uh, Anna, we just learnt from Ken Chong, I think that they do need to be careful not to go too early. Mm -hmm. They're about to hit that hairpin. Uh, Lucy is very close to the front. She needs to make sure uh, she's got a good wheel. Claudia Henneken, she is the kind of rider who could go early and hold on to it. Has she got the Zwift experience to do it? Oh, it's, um, and look, Kim Kuhn Stokes there as well. Great to see her on this front pack. But yeah, this climb is hard. I mean, it's, we've got a couple of riders dropped off the back. Hens Semenko. When did that happen? We've got Hens, Hens Semenko um, dropped here off the back. Um, so very interesting there that she has not made it up. We'll take it back up to the action, but that is a crucial loss 
Um, bit of banter happening here, bike change. I mean, you are hitting some cobbles. If you want to risk it, you could bike change to a gravel bike. I would not recommend it. Um, <laughs> that would probably be that you would... By the time you'd bike change, the race will be over. So uh, not a good one for here. Yeah, I mean, sure you could, but that's not really a reliable tactic. <laughs> no. um, thanks for you. Like you're through, you're trying to put people off, Russell. What are oh. you doing ahead of your race tomorrow? People are like, ooh, maybe. Uh, now <laughs> maybe Emily I will. Gartland, I think <laughs> we need to watch here. But it is Lucy Isdale, hands down, and Melissa Fung who are the two most powerful sprinters. But it is all about timing here. Uh, Mel Fung is our pocket rocket, so I have a feeling that if she positions herself well, uh, she might be perfect, and she is at the moment, she's sitting in about fifth wheel, uh, might be perfectly placed to get this. Emily Gartland, though, is absolutely uh, making sure they work for it. She's up around the 400 watt mark, fairly low cadence, so she is mm -hmm. slogging it out, trying. Is she trying to go for the win for herself? Trying to lead it out for TBR? Um, for Lucy Eisdale. I don't know, she's got a decent gap here with Michelle. So this, this is, is a good yeah, move. This Michelle is looking Bond good. has had a great ride. It's going to be between Michelle and Emily, I think, as we're seeing here. Emily, she's pushed it. I mean, she was up around the 5.5 almost that whole time. These corners really pitch up. So they'll go around the corner and you can see it pitches up to 17% there. This is brutal. Um, and she is taking it away. Two seconds now on Michelle behind her. And then we've got the next rider well in the distance. So Emily here, amazing, amazing effort up this climb. We're going to see Michelle coming in for second, but Emily taking this away. Great result. Michelle coming through in the second with a burrito. There's no one behind her, so she doesn't really need to bother about that. Lucy, our great rider, uh, the uh, 5K hero on the women's side, just getting past for Hennigan there on the line. That's devastating. Van Rossum there coming through in about fifth. So great result. It was quite a different uh, race there for the women. It was a bit more of a, a solo sort of breakaway with a couple of riders um, coming through behind her, Kate. That was a very good sprint from her. I think this is the kind of course, and uh, you'll notice I have my um, very, you know, I like it. I've got my whiteboard to make sure I could <laughs> <laughs> to make sure I could see all of the data. Uh, but this was the kind of course where you could dial in twos with power and quite mm. accurately choose the riders who would be there at the finish. It did come down to timing a bit. I think Emily Gartland absolutely took her opportunity there and Mel Fung the pocket rocket she wasn't really able to hit out uh, in the meaningful way she would have if she was in the front we also saw that in the men where Ken Chong went a little bit too early in my opinion uh, before that hairpin even uh, and opened it up for Fabian Davola to take the spoils also big shout out to uh, Deepak Elite because they ended up taking uh, first and second after me poo-pooing them, uh, or first and third, I think it was, uh, poo-pooing them at the start. So live and learn. <laughs> live and learn. That's right. Let's, uh, I'm just seeing if we've got some of the results coming in from that men's race. Looks like we do. So I will get uh, those up on screen so we're all set to go. Uh, let's see if I've got... I'm just going to pull straight up with the results, I think. Let's have a look take a look and, and everybody can remember that we can also go to wtrl.racing uh, to find any results uh, for any of the divisions fabian davola took the win we saw that brilliant sprint from him and well played ahead of torben partridge madsen i have a feeling that aero uh, may have come away the victors today overall although ends bro and josh haggerty certainly made good headway sam lindsay for deepak elite also in third ken chong and lupinetti fourth and fifth for the world elite zwifter sharks uh we've got josh haggerty in six kenta endo um, i've loved watching his sprinting uh, in all of the seasons to date so it's great to see him up there mark bostead uh coming in in eighth corby price uh, coming in in ninth and uh the ever eternal mark o'brien rounding out that top 10. quite fitting to have uh, Mark O'Brien somewhere in that top 10. <laughs> I know that is pretty good. We'll see uh, now hopefully we'll get the women's results up in that uh, B category which we just watched. Let's have a look. Magic. Do we have it? Yes, Emily Gartland taking Ooh. it out for TBR Smile on B. 
uh, Michelle Bond in second from AHDRL Bullets, Claudia Maria Hennekin, who we profiled, Raven Bees in third, great to see that, Lucy Esdale, what a machine, taking out so many of the fastest time segments and the first cross line and fourth on the day. Gina Van Rossum was in fifth. Good to know, too, that there is fastest time segment and first across line and finish line points for that climb, too. So that's a lot of uh, points you can mop up at the end. Kimberly Kern-Stokes, fan favorite in sixth. Sarah Fletcher in seventh. Emma Falez in eighth for Chicks and Nicks. Good to see them on the board. Kylie Adair in ninth. And Melissa Fung from the AHDRL Bullets rounding out in tenth. I love our little pocket rocket. Mel um, Fung. Whoopsie. I got us started too early. Sorry, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. I was like, okay, have a good day then. That's it. See ya. <laughs> um, some of the other grades have finished. Go to WTRL uh, Racing to take a look at all of those results. Anna, will you be racing tomorrow? Yes, I am. Yes. So I will be out there with my sprinting bike. I'm going the Pinarello Dogma F with the NV 7.8s for anyone uh, watching at home that okay. wants a little bike choice uh, selection and the uh, sleek black socks, black shoes. Okay, excellent. Oh, so black socks, black shoes. That's not Kiwi. Not like Mark Post <laughs> and Anna Russell. <laughs> so letting down the side and uh, no gravel bike at the finish no, this time. No, absolutely I think that's not. overkill. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for joining us and uh, continue to jump in on the socials at any point. Tag us. We love being involved and uh, getting more info on all of you. So we will see you uh, same time, same place next week.